Good morning, Coach Biker here. I'm in love. Okay, so if you had to buy a bike with your own money. Actually, I don't know any other way of buying a bike. What would you buy? Well, I came recently a bit of a KTM fanboy, having had the 790 Duke. Which is absolutely amazing machine. I loved it. If I was a street bike rider, I'd have stuck with that. If I had more money, I'd have stuck with it. It's fantastic. But unfortunately, I can only afford one bike, and I had a test drive on the bike that I'm riding at the moment a few weeks back. It came absolutely smitten. Now I've purchased one. This is my KTM 790 Adventure, the standard model. So you won't see me riding around Morocco or jumping over sand dunes. We don't have any of that round here in Merseyside. What we do have is lots of uh, B roads like this out in the countryside. So to get this bike ready for a trip that I'm planning next week, just going to do a few codgery miles out of the countryside and see how we get on. I'll take you through the brand new KTM 790 Adventure. His name by the way, Ludwig von. Apparently he tells me he's named after a famous Austrian explorer and adventurer who was once gored through the groin by a rhino but survived. Go figure. Anyway Ludwig von, if that's your name it's fine by me, that's what I'll call you. Onwards Ludwig Vaughan! Okay, so I've just pulled over. The bike's uh, done 10 miles. Only three of which were mine. So I've just pulled over to have an initial cool down because I am running this bike in and I'm going to run it in very carefully. Um, the first hundred miles particularly and then I've got a trip planned next week so I'll uh, strike out more on it then. First things to note are this is the S, well it's not the S version or how to call it that, this is the standard version of the 790. I decided that the um, R version um, is just too high for me. I could ride it off-road no problem but in a city where I live uh, with lots of stop starts, potholes, lorries close by. It's not the sort of thing I'd want to drop. So I feel more comfortable at this height. Uh, I spec the bike with, wait for it, um, quick shift and down blipper, which you have to pay extra for, unlike the Duke, um, which is not a very nice surprise. That's £350. I've also spec'd it with um, rally mode. Um, because I thought, well, I'll, I'll only end up doing that anyway at some point, so I've got it over with. So I don't know if you can, probably can't see that, but rally mode is there. So I've got street, rain, off-road and rally. Um, obviously the one difference, the big difference on this bike to the R is the suspension. This is non-adjustable WP, 43mm I think at the front, and um, just a basic shock on the back. But riding the roads I'm on, which you can see, sort of farm lanes and back roads, um, it's fine. I've just been down um, a bit of a track and it was good. Yeah. Um, so I'll get off and just have a look around the bike. So I absolutely adore KTM uh, lights. I know some people find them a little odd. To me, it looks like some sort of medieval um, knight's horse. The way the nose bends down, well, that's probably just me. Reminds me of a knight on a horse. Um, the tanks, you can, if you can see them there, hang down like a pair of bazooms. <laughs> can I use that word anymore? I think you just did. Okay. Um, this gives it, um, I don't know, looks like a sphinx somehow. Yeah, I've got the standard exhaust on this. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, noisy bikes, so... The test bike I rode had an Akrapovich on it. Um, I couldn't really see the point of the extra money. That's just me. Maybe one day. We'll see how it goes. 
as usual I've told myself I'm not going to add anything to this bike at all um, for a few weeks but of course you know bark busters they'd be nice the mirrors on this are fine I've no problem with at all they're wider than the Duke they're perfect viewing I'm leaving them I don't care the screen I believe is adjustable by this screw here now I noticed when I was coming along then that uh, I've got buffeting on the top of my helmet exactly the same as the Africa twin or many other adventure bikes if I bent my head down I was out of the wind so either I can lift that up if it will lift up I don't know which setting it's on and that might sort it or more likely put on an aero um, uh, screen to just create a laminar flow and smooth it out so having said that I'm not going to change it I think the first thing I will try is uh, perhaps a laminar flow um, screen we'll see how that goes I have to say that just riding it down the road to here it felt like heaven this is the sort of bike I like to ride so I love the Duke and I'm going to miss it I'm going to miss that burst of speed but when you get to my age the sit up and beg adventure style is uh, definitely the way to go and it's still got plenty of poke I'm in street mode at the moment and um, opened the throttle a couple of times and uh, yeah it went along quite nicely so I'm very pleased with it it's cost me far more money than I could possibly afford but I do own it I bought it outright no PCP or whatever that drugs called and it is a drug because you keep getting new bikes so hopefully I'll be sticking with this one for a while one thing I'm going to do is uh, do something about those spokes to protect them before they start to corrode I'm not saying they will corrode my experience with the Africa twin was that they corroded very quickly so maybe a wipe over with some ACF 50 what I've got to say about this bike is it uh, feels so balanced compared to say the Africa twin that I had the Africa twin when it's full of fuel I always felt like it was going to fall over this bike I can lean it over and there's no weight um, similar I suppose to GS um, the 1250 GS with the the engine lower down the weight of the fuel seems to give it a good balance um, even so I, I personally would not be comfortable riding an R around a city and people can say what they like about that I'm sitting here on this now with I can get both feet on the ground and if I have to I could waddle along I'm not going to but I you know get myself out of trouble I wouldn't be able to do that on an R I'd be sliding off one side which is great until the time you have to do an emergency stop Oh, on the clock by the way at the moment it's got battery 14.4 volts uh, the, the odometer um, ride mode ABS I think it's um, similar to the way it goes changes color with the when the light changes um, I'll see if it changes back again in a minute right so I'm gonna ride do a few more miles oh it's gone back there's a plane coming into land right let's go Oh lovely Ludwig, can you sing songs like that um, that people are going to listen to? I don't think so. Oh lovely Ludwig, riding through the countryside on Ludwig Bonn. Okay, so yeah, the um, if I bend like that, I've got no wind on my crash helmet. If I sit up, it's definitely turbulent air across the top of here. So maybe a laminar flow screen uh, it does wobble a bit that's one thing but it will wobble more when it gets more weight on it just have to see how that goes uh, doubtless there'll be different screens for this in time but um, I shan't be buying one for a year did you say a year sir well I'll try one thing I, I do like about this bike that I miss when I was on the Duke is I could stand up and I, um, it does ride lovely standing up just go over these bumps um, it feels like it's designed for that the pedals are in the right place very good so screw in the tires nice and steady it's a strange feeling so it feels like a much bigger bike than the Duke even though it isn't but it's as light as the Duke so yeah it's a different feeling I, I know when I did the test ride the handlebars felt like they were a bit far away I have to say the way my bikes arrived feels great 
Yeah, I don't need bar risers. Uh, that's interesting. Maybe the test bike was set up differently. It's a beautiful day. Um, it's 13 degrees, 14 degrees. I did have um, heated grips fitted as well. They're KTM heated grips, which are not the hottest in the world, I believe, but they're okay for me. I found them to be fine. It certainly felt too hot today. I've come along at 40 miles an hour. I'm going to bring the bike to a halt. See whether there's any fork dive. Okay, the ABS kicked in there. Yeah, they're okay. There's not too bad at all. Um, it's um, very solid, actually. No problem at all. I don't think. It's disgusting. People do look at that fly tipping. Children's children's toys. Unbelievable. What a country. Right. Well, I'm on the subject. The seat. The seat is a KTM seat, and I'm sure you know what that means. It's firm, it's wide, it's not comfortable, but it is firm. Plenty of room to move around on it. This is the obviously the the non R seat. So the non R seat. Can you say R? It's the non R seat. Um, with room for a, a pillion, plenty of room for a pillion actually. I really do feel confident at the lights on it, uh, which I never really did on my Africa Twin. So, that's uh, a great bike. I really, really, really like it. Oh, yeah, obviously, another difference from the R is. Um, the tyres. No off-road tyres on this, although it's got tra uh, trail trail tyres on it, which basically are road tyres. Yeah, having the weight low down really is uh, confidence inspiring. Really makes a difference. It's not a cosmetic exercise. Um, Particularly if you're my size, just for reference, I'm 70 inches tall in my boots, in my motorcycle boots. So that's 5 foot 10 in my boots. And I feel happy on this, it fits me. So I've just pulled over here for a second, just to again just let the engine cool a little bit during its ringing period. Impressions so far are very positive. The only nitpicks I've got is the wind off the screen, the top, definitely hits the top of your helmet. If I bend just a tiny bit, it's gone. The seat's quite hard, as I said, but um, I'm used to it. Um, having had a KTM, so it's fine for me. It's on the lower setting. Um, finding first gear is, at the moment, not as as um, smooth as the Duke. Whether that will uh, wear in in time, I don't know. Uh, just nitpicks, really. I don't know if the fuel cap will be as easy to, uh, as difficult to open as the Duke was. The Duke I had often had. Uh, I found that quite difficult. Let's just give it a try. Yeah, it's a KTM fuel cap. I just, I don't know why. I just find them quite tricky. But they're tiny things. Am I happy that I spent a lot of money on a brand new bike? Yes, I am. <laughs> I can't wait to put more miles on this. Okay, just take Ludwig Vaughan for his first ride on some grass. It's only a car park, but um, you know, it's grass. I can stand up. Seven miles an hour. It's fine. Yeah, I know it's not off-road, but it's, uh, you know, the equivalent of the green lane some green lanes. It's quite rutted, it feels okay. I 
Okay, so white tank, but I can still filter through traffic. The tank for filtering through traffic is irrelevant if you're concerned about that. No problem. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the city and try a bit of city riding on my off-road enabled road bike or whatever it's sold as. So here we go, city riding. Can I filter through the traffic? Going through the traffic, no problem. Easy. No issues. Bumpy roads. Let's try out the stock suspension. Roadworks. Yeah, it's fine. I don't know what it's like where you are at the moment, but it seems everybody's digging up every road as though there's uh, as though it's the end of the march and their money will be clawed back if they don't spend it. Or am I being cynical? Okay, this is sort of bad roads you get around here. A uh, mixture of uh, nice fresh tarmac and ripped off uh, surface and uh, yeah, it's fine. So I think I can say I've got filtering ticked off. If you want to buy one of these for commuting and you're worried about the uh, petrol tanks, worry not, it's fine. I'm not quite up to the standard of the crumble. But it's just fine. Yeah, as far as the uh, stock suspension goes, although it's non-adjustable, I think it's uh, maybe just on the back for preload, I don't know. I really ought to know, didn't I? But. Uh, I haven't read the manual yet. I'm going to pull in here. Um, I think it's a great balance between, um, you know, an off-road suspension and a road bike. It's not going to be, I suspect, the same as they are. But that's what you pay the extra thousand pounds for. I'm just going to let the engine rest. Um, I've just ridden bad potholes resurfacing and it's coped with all of it fine it's a great town bike it's um, filters I'm just by the river Mersey at the moment it's a lovely day great day to get have a new bike it's an everyday though but um, yeah I absolutely love this I'm trying to stay uh, objective and um, be all missing and flyer about it but no, I absolutely love this bike. It's the bike for me. Next week I'm going to take it across country uh, from one coast to the other and see how it gets on. Just as it is, no, no changes at all other than if that screen comes up, I don't know whether that's its highest or not, I would lift that up just for the motorway. Um, other than that, I'm just going to strap a bag to the back or just wear a rucksack whatever and go over to the east coast I live in Merseyside on the west coast so I'm going to go over to Lincolnshire on the east coast via the M62 and um, see how it goes a nice challenge for it but I need to get a few more miles on the bike so I'm going to go and get a few more miles I've done 25 now I don't want to go in I don't want to go home I just want to stay riding okay by the River Mersey it's now the afternoon. Wishing you a great day. I'm off to ride some more. Codger Biker is out. Come on Ludwig Von. Let's go. Ta-da!
Who's a good boy then? Who's a good boy? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Old Ludwig Vaughn.